So here we are. I think we let's um, let's start with these wines. Let's uh, a little bit of high mahogany in your glass there, Chief. Sweet cheese. That's right. So high in the hog. This is um, first off. The name was uh, a name set in my house every holiday when we had uh, more than three courses on the table. If you know what I mean. We, uh, my grandmother would always say, "We're living high in the hog," which just meant you're living your best life. This is a great moment, and uh, we never took it for granted. High in the hog. This is this is really fitting for this wine because this is you know a wine that delivers that. It's a very versatile, it's our most versatile wine we make, I, I believe, and it's a wine that really encapsulates our, our house style of all of these wines up here. It's, it's a wine that uh, we can look at and say, this embodies or, uh, you know, what we do here. It, it contains multiple varieties. There's no rule on what varieties can go into this wine and multiple vineyards, um, Paper Street and our estate vineyard. So it, it definitely has great vineyard pedigree it showcases complexity for a wine that's just 20 bucks, which we're always excited about that. And uh, what's your thoughts on this, Adrian? Well, just to back it up a little bit, I love the idea and the concept of sitting around a, a table for a holiday meal and, and uh, grandma spouting and saying we're living high <laughs> in the hog right now. Um, that's certainly a, a moment that resonates with all of us right now, especially with what we're going, the time where we're not taking a lot for granted and we're really focusing on the small things. And, and that's a small thing, but look, stuck with you. High in the hog is always a really fun wine for us to put together. Yeah. Um, it's bringing together so many different vineyards, uh, so many different soil types, climates, um, varietals, and sometimes it's it's hard to, to get all those pieces, those puzzle pieces to fit together because there's a lot of opposing elements. So to try to feather them in together to kind of work seamlessly is, is a challenge. Um, it's a fun wine to, to work with. I mean, at 2,500 cases, it is um, it is a challenge for us to put together, but um, I think the uh, proof is in the pudding and the resulting product is, is fun. You know? Yeah, and, and, and back to what he was saying about, you know, the, the challenge of putting this wine together is you think that if you're just left with all the components in the cellar and you say, all right, we just have this many gallons left, let's put it all together and make this wine. You, you can't do that. You have to, you have to blend this wine as if you were doing it like any other wine. It's not just the leftover uh, lots of wine in the cellar. You, you definitely have to piece it together and some things still don't make the cut. You know, it takes a while for it to put, to put this wine together and ending wine is always really, really intriguing. It's, it's, it showcases you know, incredible red fruit and, and uh, you know, floral components and kind of shows off that house style of purity um, that we really, really go for. Um, but then we weave in all this darker elements to give it, you know, to give it that richness and that yumminess that we're, we're, we're hoping that you guys receive in the bottle. So, all right, so now we're back to tasting the wine. It really showcases the vintage first and foremost. I mean, this is a wine that has a lot of baby fat and there's there's richness, there's ripe fruits. I mean, it was a really, really extremely warm year, especially right before we picked the fruit. You know, really give the wines a bit of ripe fruit exuberance. So we're, uh, this wine definitely delivers that. And uh, when he says it was a warm vintage, that's an understatement. It was uh, touching 115 it degrees. It was hot, okay? It, it was, was hot. It was flat out <laughs> hot, though. <laughs> 115 degrees, I, I mean, for a solid two weeks. Um, from Paper Street Vineyard, you couldn't pick it quick enough. We harvested 80 tons from Paper Street in two weeks, which was essentially close to half of our harvest. And it was a mad dash. It was, it was rip-roaring. But this wine... I mean, just smelling it, I mean, it's just floral, it's red fruits, it's, you know, there's a, there's a bit, of, there's a bit of jamminess, but not in a bad way. It's, it's, it, it shows, it shows it being a, you know, Syrah Grenache Morved heavy wine. We, we did blend a little bit of Petit Syrah and a little bit of Viognier. And also Santa Barbara County was not subject to those extreme heat spikes as well. It was a little more of a temperate growing season for them down there. And so... Um, the inclusion of the Santa Barbara County fruit actually kind of played off of, of Paso too and kind of helped to balance out some of that overt richness. It was, it was all relative, relative to the area, right? Wow. Silky tannins. A little dark, dark element on the end, a little dark chocolate. It's good. It's, I mean, that wine's just, yeah, it's a no-brainer. You will be living your best life with that wine, for sure. 